along with Destiny McElroy. I'm Chris Plank. To give you today's keys to the game presented by Riverwind Casino. Destiny, what are your keys to a Sooner victory? I think they just need to perfect the basics. I, I, I want to see them be smart with their base running. Complete defense. Um, last time they were at home, we saw a couple errors or just kind of misplayed balls. Uh, command from the pitchers. I want to see Carly Keeney just really own it out there on the mound. And then just clutch and timely hitting. I don't think they've had any issues with that, but they've got to keep that up throughout tonight's game. Our keys to tonight's Sooner victory are brought to you by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind Casino, always a good time. All right, let us let us brag and flex our muscles a little bit about this weather report after a weekend of just dire news. Which, by the way, it is 71 degrees right now in Lubbock, too, <laughs> just to be clear. Uh, 75 degrees in Norman right now. Uh, we'll dip down to the lower 60s, but there's a good chance we'll be long gone by then as clouds roll in tonight. There's a slight chance of rain overnight, but for the game, gorgeous. Uh, what is our winds at here? Our winds are blowing. They're gusting out of the south. And I would guess probably, what, about 16 miles an hour? Today's weather brought to you by the Trails Golf Club in Norman, where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more. First pitch of the game, a swinging, crowning ground ball down the third baseline. What a play on the backhand by Brito. Long throw, draws, and pulls Sanders off the bag. Corona, Camille Corona, a leadoff single on what was nearly an incredible play by Brito. Just pulled Sanders off the bag, leadoff hitter aboard. It will be ruled a hit. Out of the south at 15 miles an hour. So it was pretty close. As Lindsey Franklin, the right-handed hitting first baseman, digs in. First pitch, a little bit low and in, ball one. How did you just guess that? You said 16 and it's 15? I looked at the weather before I came here. Oh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> don't what give me too much kind of meteorologist? Don't, don't give, hey, I took <laughs> weather and climate in college, and I had to drop it before the last two weeks of the of this session. 1-0 is low. Two balls and no strikes. Take a look at UTA coming up here in a bit. The Mavericks under their head coach, Dill File. Two balls and no strikes. That one's foul down the right field line. It's going to hit the netting. Thanks for joining us for the Sooner pregame show. Thanks for joining us for Sooner softball, period. The Sooner pregame show presented by Walden Cleaners and Laundry, where the difference is quality. The next time... We join you for the Sooner pregame show. We will be at USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium Friday night, Oklahoma and Baylor. Still tickets available. Let's sell it out. Hard hit ball back up the middle into center field. It's a base hit. For a moment, it looked like it might be a tailor-made double play ball. But Alina Torres was shaded just enough from the fir- towards the first base bag that she wasn't able to get there. Good start for the Mavericks. Back-to-back singles, and that'll bring Marley Nices to the plate. I think that's one thing you always see about the underdogs kind of coming in, and they're just going to swing. They're going to take their chances. Why not? Last season, the Mavericks, UTA Mavericks, located breaking news in Arlington. Get it? University of Texas, are, in case anyone was confused. They went 22-30. and 30. They went 0-5 against top 10 teams, 0-1 against top 25, uh, top 10 teams. Did beat a top 25 team as the first pitch to Nysis is in for a strike. And their head coach, Dill File, in her third season, assistant pitching coach at A&M from 17 to 22 prior to to taking over UTA. The 0-1 is a little bit up. One ball and one strike. File also was a volunteer assistant coach at LSU. uh, Excuse me, Dill. Where did I get Dill File from? (laughs) I think Kara Dill. (laughs) I said the Dill File on it. I'm a moron. (laughs) Kara Dill, the 1-1, is a bunt. It's a beauty. Keeney gloves it, throws to first. It gets away from Sanders into the outfield. And a run will score because Oklahoma didn't take care of the basics. As Destiny McElroy told you in the keys to the game, a wild throw. Corona scores from second. And Nysus is aboard. 
And it's one nothing Mavericks. Sooners look like they're as confused as me looking at Kara Dill's numbers. Dill also was a volunteer assistant at LSU and Kentucky. And it started this season 10 and 16. Here's a hard hit ball right to Sanders Club. Steps on the back. Double play. Nicest was a little bit too far off the bag, and Jessica Adams, the DP, hit it right to Sanders. Two away. Joe Coons, Faleula, and Elizabeth Mason are the assistants. Though Kara Dill takes care of just about everything. First pitch to Jessica Adams, or pardon me, to the right-handed hitting Jade Marino is low for ball one. So, a leadoff single by Corona, a single by Franklin, the bunt by Nysis, the error on the throw. It'll be ruled a sacrifice and an error, and then Adams lines into a double play. 1-0 pitch to Moreno. The pitcher is in for strike one. Tough start defensively for the Sooners. Yeah, lots of commotion going on, but... You don't typically expect your third hole to drop a bunt. Wow. Line drive, one hopper to Jennings. Long throw makes it look easy. UTA strikes first on the nicest sack bunt that ended up with a sooner error. Seventy-five degrees and gorgeous in Norman, but the Sooners struggle in the top half of the first. UTA pushes a run across, and as we head to the bottom of the first inning, Oklahoma trails in one nothing. Coleman, Parker, and Jennings leading things off against the righty Moreno. And the first pitch is up and in for ball one. Jane Moreno is three and a three and three on the season. ERA hovering right around six point four six. comes the 1-0 pitch from the righty. Caught the lower edge of the strike zone. UTA is wearing the kind of uniforms that would drive my man Toby Rowland mad. (laughs) It's white on white, and there is a slight blue outline of everything. You can barely make out the numbers. The 1-1 is an off speed that is in for strike two. You groans and moans. On that call is suddenly cloud cover has masked the brilliant sunshine that was shining down here through most of the day. The one-two to Jada is way outside. Three games this weekend for Jada Destiny. Went two for four, one for two, and one for three. All total, she scored seven runs in the three games, doing the leadoff hitter's job, right? She is unbelievable. 2-2 2-2 pitch, reaches and pokes it foul, and Patty Gasso matrixed away for just a little bend back, and that was it. Coach looking smooth. White long sleeve with a white visor. Black pants, same for Coach Steele, though Fale Palima is sporting the shades over in that first base coach's box. 2-2 count to the Sooner left-handed hitting center fielder. The pitch headed home. She hits it hard. Off the third baseman, Corona, and it ricochets towards center field. Retrieved by Cavazos, but Coleman is aboard on what will surely be ruled a hit. Ouch! Yeah, that is a hit in my book. That looked like it hurts. jana has got some pop. Not the best pitch either. She was just able to get on top of it. Here's Ella Parker. How about a freshman hitting in the two-hole and doing what Ella Parker has been doing for the Sooners? Pretty unbelievable. Here's the first pitch to the left-handed hitting DP, and that's a little bit up and in ball one. Our umpires tonight, this is a good crew. This is about as good of a crew as you're going to get in the Big 12. Chad Spittler is behind home plate. Bubba Ewald is over at first, and newcomer to this group is Garrett Knowles. Standing behind second base. This is a good crew. The 1-0 is a little bit out. Two balls and no strikes. 
can you tell I like this umpiring crew? <laughs> if only Troy Kaikendall was out there. If you have Ewald, Spitler, and Kaikendall, you got my dream umpires. <laughs> Here's the two ball, no strike pitch from the righty. It's a good spot right on the inside corner. They have rolled Jada's shot a hit. I think that was acceptable and understandable. 438 average for Parker. She takes strike two. Mm. Uh, I think that's a pretty good pitch. Now I'm defending my guy against the fans. <laughs> look at me. Just because it's your favorite umpire. You, look, you Chris. guys leave Chad Spitler alone, okay? <laughs> that's a, that's a bit, pretty good pitch. I think he'll be consistent over there. Oh, yeah. That's a strike. 2-2 two, two pitch. A little bit out. Moreno's trying to see what she can get. She danced around that outer edge, isn't she? Three balls and two strikes. Coleman's been content to just stay at first base. Is she going here? She is. It's a chopper towards short. There will be a close play. They say she's out at second on the force. One away. Nice play by Cavazos at short to Castorita, the second baseman. When Coleman popped up, she gave the safe sign, but that's about as good of a spot as Patty Gasso can have to see it, so she didn't even think twice about challenging it. Here's TRA. Boy, what? Speaking of good weekends, holy smokes. TRA Jennings, 423 average, first pitch misses outside ball one. In the 14-zip win on Friday night, Tiare went 3-for-3, three three, tying a career high with six runs batted in. She went 2-for-2 two two on Saturday with three runs batted in. And then after going 0-for-4 on Sunday, she hit a home run. Parker, late jump, taking off her second, steals the bag on a pitch that was, I believe, ball two. She's got some speed. Sneaky speed for Ella Parker. She's now... Nine for ten on stolen base opportunities. It was indeed called a ball, and she leads the team with stolen base in stolen bases. Runner in scoring position and a hitter's count. The 2-0 popped up on the infield. Franklin, the first baseman, who reaches back and makes it. There's two away, and the Sooners will need a two-out hit from the freshman. Trailing one zip here in the bottom of the first inning. We always love to hear where you're listening from. And I got to tell you, there is nothing I look forward to more than whenever I get the check-in from Cassidy's grandparents, who are always tuned in. They're in Montana. We appreciate it. The first pitch to Pickering is a little bit low and in ball one. Cassidy's grandparents in Willow Creek, tuned in every single game here on the Sooner Radio Network. Cassidy at 418 on the season. Four home runs, 21 runs batted in, and she takes the 1 0 pitch for a strike. Parker, after reaching on the fielder's choice, stole second, stands at second. A 1 1 pitch. Well, that's a good spot, strike two. That outside corner, that same pitch is going to be called. They're going to have to adjust to that. Jada Coleman went and ripped that same type of pitch down the third baseline for her leadoff single. Here's the 1-2 to Pickering, a little bit low. 2-2. Two and two. Cassidy, in the 12-run first inning on Saturday, landed the last blow, a home run that... Ended up chasing Maddie Keel from the game. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Pickering. That little off speed hangs out, ball three. And I don't know why, maybe it's because we were a little bit more down the first baseline. Now everything on that outside corner looks like a strike to me from this spot. <laughs> the 3-2. Popped up to left field, shallow left field. Renisi comes in, makes the catch inning over. Sooner strand a runner 
after the leadoff single by Jada Coleman. The fielder's choice by Ella Parker. That's exactly what it was. What's, what's All right, here we go to the second inning. Sooners trailing one nothing, <laughs> along with the former Destiny Martinez, now Destiny McElroy. I'm Chris Plank. Aubin Fiffin is our producer. Sooners get a leadoff hit from Jada Coleman, and that's it. And as they head to the second, they find themselves in a one-zip hole. Nikki Donahue, Zaya Castorita, and Kaylee Cavazos. That would be the six, seven, and eight hitters. You heard us mention Brina C out in left field. She is actually their flex as the first pitch to Donahue is grounded towards second. Backhanded by Torres, throws one away. I'll give the Mavericks. Every ball they've hit has been a hard-hit ball, it seems. They really, you know, you look at their offensive numbers throughout the season, and Kara Dill's done a really nice job with an aggressive offensive attack. Now, this isn't quite the aggressive nature of what we saw from Miami of Ohio, free swingers, but <laughs> they'll, put some, they'll put some runs on the board. I will say they've got a pretty talented coaching staff oh, yeah. with Fale Lua. She's awesome. I'm First sure pitch she's heading up for a ball. Some of that hitting. Castruita, 292 average. This is a team that don't be fooled by just the 13 home runs they've hit this season as the 1 0 pitch is in for a strike. They'll draw some walks. But here's, here's where I know you got yourself a free swinging team 117 strikeouts. <laughs> 1-1, one, one, looped into left field. Pickering has a beat on it, takes a few steps back, and quickly there is two away. And with two outs, that'll bring the shortstop, Kaylee Cavaz Cavazos, to the plate. And we're mentioning, we're talking about UTA and kind of their schedule and our opponent preview brought to you by Polston Tax Resolution and Accounting. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. Righty on righty matchup. Keeney finds the zone for strike one. They've played some good teams, and it hasn't gone well. 15-0 loss to Tennessee to start this season. They lost in run rule style to Arkansas twice. Two games by a combined score of 19 to nothing. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's in for a strike. 0-2. They played Texas a couple midweeks ago. Lost in that game 8-1. to one. But they lead here 1-0. The 0-2 way outside. In fact, all the way to the backstop, skipping past. Riley Ludlam behind home plate. We'll do it again. Speaking of Polston, getting close to tax time, Destiny. Getting close. <laughs> Colson <laughs> Tax Resolution and Accounting. Keep them in mind for all your tax services. Here's the one-two pitch. Hard hit left side. Wow. Brito on a short hop makes the play. Throws the first. Inning over. A couple of really nice defensive plays in the top half of the second. And that's five straight retired as the Mavericks go quietly. To the bottom of the second, University of Oklahoma and Center Sports Properties would like to thank our concession partners, Anheuser-Busch. Fletcher's Original Corny Dogs, Nashford, Coca-Cola, The Baked Bear, Community Coffee, Taco Mayo, Boomerang Diner, Schwab Meat, and Uber Eats. We head to the bottom of the second. Sooners down one nothing. It'll be Brito Sanders and Alina Torres. Alyssa Brito, 434 season batting average. Stands in. First pitch, a little bit up and out, ball one. Man, it really seems as if the miles per hour that are coming from the right-hander, Jay Marino, are just something the Sooners haven't seen very often. That's yeah. a kind way of saying there's not a lot of juice. 1-0 <laughs> is ripped down the third baseline foul. Yeah, and as a hitter, that is a tough adjustment to figure out the timing of a slower pitcher. Even on that, Brito really got to be that. disciplined. One ball, one strike to Brito. We're 
We're in a long windup. Boy, finds that outer edge. Strike two. Wind is blowing slightly out to right field. Not quite what it was in the early stages of warm-ups. Swings and grounds one towards short. Bobble by Cavazos and into center field. I think it would have been a tough play anyway because that ball seemed like it was taking forever to get to Cavazos. <laughs> and we'll await the official ruling from our man Thomas. And Cavazos was shaded towards third base just a little bit. It was it was pretty tough for her to cover that much ground up that middle. Here is our Loves Travel Stops player to watch for today's game. Sid Sanders loves travel stops. He's the heart of the highway. First pitch to Sid Sanders headed home, and she takes it low and in ball one. They will rule that in air. Sanders... Uh, I'm going to say this, and some people might get mad at me, but cooled off just a bit this weekend. The what else do you expect when someone hits six home runs in eight games? <laughs> Here's the 1-0, and she loops this one into shallow left field, falling fast, and a diving catch is made in left by Brinacy. An incredible catch that took away, at the very least, a single. That ball gets by her, who knows? But that ball hung in the air long enough, and Brinacy, who was playing deep, came racing in to make the catch. And there's one away. Here's Torres. We'll have to go more in depth on Sid Sanders, her next at bat. Did not have Sid Sanders' first pitch swing in there. He was second pitch swinging. Torres, 385 average. She hit a home run on Friday in Lubbock. First pitch, a little bit low and in ball one. I don't know if I've given my how much... I dig watching Alina Torres just be a Sooner. Always a smile on her face. Seems to be just in love with the process. The 1-0 is hit hard, fouled on the third baseline. In that Friday opener in Lubbock, Destiny, she went one for three. The only hit was a home run. Avery Hodge got the start Saturday's in Saturday's game. Torres came off the bench and went one for two. And Alina went one for two on Sunday. Not a bad yeah. weekend. I've loved watching her throughout her career. She's just been so patient to get her time. She's done a really good job. She's a great teammate. The one one pitch misses up high. Two balls and a strike. Speaking of really good teammates, Riley Boone is on deck. This is going much better for Jade Marino than it did her last time out. Right-hander out of Corpus Christi brings home the 2-1, and it's blasted pretty deep to center field, and it's gone! Alina Torres wakes up the crowd at Love's Field, shakes the Sooners from their early slumber with a bomb to the deepest part of the field, landing right in Gasso's garden in center field, and it's 2-1 Sooners. We need to say more nice things about her. <laughs> that was a shot. Now, is that the official term out there, Gas is I just went with it. Okay. I still I like, like it. I still with Riley. If Riley Boone was a center fielder, it would totally be Boone's farm. But <laughs> we're going to go with Gasso's guard for now. Here's Riley Boone. I mentioned that Jane Marino was having a little better start than the Flower of Love High School product had her last time out. She went two and two-thirds against Cal Baptist and gave up ten hits. And she just got hit with a line drive off the bat of Boone, who beats it out as the ball ricocheted off Marino. Right to the third baseman, Corona, but there was nothing she could do. She wore that like a champ. Holy smokes. That ball lined right off her chest. Boone. Riley Boone is on fire. Yeah, she's on fire, and she's also shown a lot more pop this season. Swinging freely was yeah. the term Coach used this weekend. Here's the Sooner starting catcher for the next few weeks, Riley Ludlam. First pitch, oh, she wanted to, but takes it for a strike. If you missed Coach in our pregame show, Kinsey Hansen dealing with a bit of a 
knee issue. It is not anything that's torn or too severe as the 0-1 pitch is way outside. One ball and a strike. So I think anytime you're dealing with a knee issue and you're a catcher, you want to make sure that you take as much time to get it healthy as you can. So Riley Ludlam, who was solid this weekend against Texas Tech, very least the next couple of weekends, the 1-1, is popped up on the infield. Reno's called off at the last minute by Corona, the third baseman, second out of the inning. But our hopes are destiny that maybe, maybe by the Texas series? That would be ideal. Now we're going to have a trip to the circle. It's it's like they just want to do a little double checking here on the pitcher Marino as this will be the second time through the lineup for the Sooners. So Kara Dill checking on everyone. So as this trip to the circle comes to a close, Destiny, so far you, in your keys to the game, talked about wanting to see the Sooners perfect the basics after a bit of a rough top half of the first inning where they gave up a run. Good to see them have the one, two, three inning. And now, you know, with two outs, this offense really seems to cook. But yeah. so far, meh. Yeah, uh, I uh, mean, we had a rough start. We got work to do. Well, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> But I think that's good. Sorry. They they need to be tested a little bit. Here's the first pitch to Jada. A little bit out. Ball one. Coleman, her first time up, singled on a ball that hit off the third baseman, Corona. Boone's at first. It's 2-1. to The Sooners lead it. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Coleman swings and launches this one foul. Jada's season average currently at 425. Boy, quietly, because it seems like everyone wants to talk about anything but Sooner softball now. <laughs> quietly, Jada and Tiara are putting together MVP seasons. Wild pitch. Skips off the plate to the backstop. Booney round second. She'll take a look and head back. Runner in scoring position. The wind has died down. Boone at second. They have they are giving Jada Coleman the middle of the field. Two one pitch to Jada. Hard hit ball in the right field. It's a base hit. It'll get under the glove of Hill, the right fielder, two to wall. Boone will score. Look at Jada Coleman around the second. On her way to third. Patty Gasso sends her home and she'll score. A myriad of mistakes by the Mavericks. Leads to a two-run inside the park home run from Jada Coleman. It won't say that on the scorebook, but we'll call it that for now. Four to one, Oklahoma. Creating chaos. Create the chaos. Make it happen. I think my favorite thing about what we just saw was was the the holdup over at third base. <laughs> Jada was going in to potentially slide on a close play, and Coach Gasses kept sending her. <laughs> The throw after the ball, I'm telling you what, Hill did not cover a lot of ground in a very quick amount of time. And that ball got under to her under her glove. When she tried to throw it in, she missed the cutoff person by a mile. And Coleman scored easily. Four to one Sooners. First pitch to Ella Parker is in for a strike. So that kind of like Ella Parker's inside the park home run this year, it will likely be a single with a couple of errors, maybe a double with a couple of errors. Let's wait and see what the official score decides. Swings and drills one deep down the left field line, and it is dropped in foul territory. Brennessy nearly made a fantastic play, and she crashed 
saying dropped is unfair. As she went to make the play, she crashed against the netting in foul territory. No balls and two strikes. The pitch to Parker. Swings and bounces it back up the middle past the second baseman, Castorita, and into center field. For some reason, Castorita tried to backhand it, and it wasn't even close. is a little bit more like what we expected to see from the Sooners out of the game. It's 4-1. to one. I think with an offense like this, the Mavericks are going to have to get their bodies in front of the ball. I think we witnessed that with Hill and Castorita over at second. They've got to be able to stop that ball. First pitch to Jennings. Runner goes. Parker's off the second. It's another stolen base for Ella Parker. Two stolen bases in the afternoon for Parker, which has her team leading total up to 10. She is 10 for 11 on stolen base opportunities. They did rule two errors on the UTA play that led to Par uh, Coleman's jaunt. That's in for a strike to T.R.A. Jennings. A single for Jada. The advancement to third was on a throwing error, and both of the errors are on right field, it looks like. Ouch. The 1-1 one, one is a check swing, but a little bit in. Well, actually, you know what? They only have one error right now in the official stats because I thought they would give the error on her letting the ball get underneath her and go to the wall and then on the throw, the throw. but right now just one. Here's the 2-1 pitch to TRA, a little bit low, 3-1. So, at least on what the official stats are showing right now, scoreboard, i saying it quietly just in case Caitlin can hear me, <laughs> scoreboard looks to be incorrect. It's only two errors right now on UTA. Runner at second, two outs, 4-1 to one Sooners. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Jennings, up high, ball four. There is work in the pin. Elena Hampton is warming up for the Mavericks. With two on, here's Cassidy Pickering. She's the ninth batter to hit this inning. Pickering flied out to left field her last time up. Here's the first pitch from the righty Moreno to the freshman. He's headed home. Nearly hits her, moves out of the way. Ball one. Four runs on five hits for the Sooners. OU was charged with a first inning error on the throw by Keeney on the attempted bunt. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Boy, that didn't miss by much. Two balls and no strikes. Four run seconds so far. Are the Sooners done? Good hitters count here. The 2-0 is popped down the left field line, foul territory, and slicing into the stands. How about this stat? Two outs this year. Cassidy Pickering, 438 batting average. With the runners in scoring position, what's that say? 500? Oh, my gosh. As a freshman? As a freshman. Hitting 500 with runners in scoring position. 2-1, hangs up high, ball three. Brito waits on deck. Here comes the 3-1 pitch to the freshman. Ball four. A little in. And Alyssa Brito will bat with the bases loaded. And she is the 10th batter here in the second. Adjust your scorecards accordingly. And we'll have a circle visit here. We want to tell you about Courtyard by Marriott. Just minutes from the OU campus, the Courtyard by Marriott Norman is competitively priced with travelers in mind. Learn more about great amenities and book your stay today at Marriott 
marriott.com. That's marriott.com slash OKCNO. And the Bob Moore Ford, patriot of the game. Every home game you got a chance to honor service members courtesy of Bob Moore Ford through the patriot of the game. To nominate a patriot, visit bobmoreford.com slash hero. All right, base is loaded. Two outs. Brito started this inning reaching on an air and scored the first Sooner run. And she hammers one. If it's fair, it's a grand slam home run. It is gone. A Brito bomb with the bases loaded. And Oklahoma has blown this game open. It's an eight-run second inning. And it's 8-1 to one Sooners on a grand slam from Alyssa Brito, her third home run destiny in her last four at-bats. I think that was the hardest home run I've seen at Love's Field. That cleared the second set of bleachers out in left field. I was worried off the bat it might hook a little bit foul. But that thing straightened up, and it's gone, and that will do it for Moreno. Took the Sooners a time through the lineup, and by the time that second time through the lineup got cooking, Paul game. So we'll have our first pitching change of the game, brought to you by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops is the heart of the highway. Greasy Bumpers, is that 22? 22 is the new pitcher. So Gracie Bumpers comes out of the pin. Uh, before we tell you about the Splendora Texas product, who on the season has a 6.2 bar, uh, 6.24 ERH, she's 0 and 6. What did you see an adjustment that the Sooners made at the plate? I think they just got, you know, once they get around the lineup again, they. They know what they're looking for. They know what the pitchers got. They're very educated hitters. They're using the time that they have in the dugout to understand her pitching sequence. So I think it's just that second time around they were able to catch back up. Boy, did they. Bumpers comes into the game. She's a senior in her fourth year, so she has another. Nope, she does not have another year of eligibility available. Opponents. 20 strikeouts, 19 walks, and they're hitting right around 200 against her as the first pitch to Sid Sanders is a ball. Last time out against Cal Baptist, three and two-thirds, seven hits, but gave up just one run, struck out three and walked two for the righty. She stares in. Sooners up now eight to one, and the 1-0 pitch misses ball two. Eight runs now on six hits, two of those home runs. Sanders takes the 2-0 pitch way outside, ball three. I made a mistake in my scorebook, Destiny. For some reason, I wrote the runs as four in the second. I don't think they're finished yet. (laughs) I still cannot believe how far that ball just went. The 3-0 pitch to Sanders is on the inside corner for a strike. That cleared the second. Wave of bleachers beyond the left field wall. And the height of it? I think it's fair to say she got about all of that. Here's the 3-1 pitch, ball four. And the team leader in walks draws another one. Sid Sanders, 22 walks on the season. You know, the, the big number that Coach talks about is they want to double the number of walks compared to strikeouts, right? Mm-hmm. 22 walks for Sid Sanders, and even though it's a little bit of a high number for her, eight strikeouts. So she's she's keeping that number alive. She's doing well. Did you happen to catch the overall strike to strikeout to walk ratio for the Sooners this weekend? Oh. Here's a deep ball to left field, off the bat of Torres, and this one's gone. It's a two-homer day for Alina Torres. Enough of the walks, Alina says. I'm sending this one yard. And it's a laser. And the Sooners 
are rocking on a Wednesday night in Norman. It's 10-1. to 1. Hello, run rule territory. Wow. <laughs> that ball I, got out of here in a hurry. I love that for Alina. She has done so well this season. I just want to see her continue to be so successful. That was a shot. It's not a bad day to be Alina Torres, is it? Two for two, two runs scored, four runs batted in, two home runs. <laughs> Doubled her home run total in one night. Here's Riley Boone. First pitch is a little low and away. When we talk about timely hitting. That's what we just saw at Abrito. Alina, they're capitalizing on the walks. The Mavericks can't come out and give any free passes. Boone gets under one deep down the right field line. That's hooking foul and out of play. And what a catch. What a catch by the conflicted man who's got a blue shirt on and a sooner hat. <laughs> That was your joke whenever you uh, showed up right in a blue shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have to tell everybody. <laughs> hey, it's radio. No one notices. <laughs> Here's the 1-1 pitch to Boone, and she lifts one pretty deep to left center field. It's off the wall, and Boone's off to the races. She'll hold up at second, claps her hands in frustration, but it's a two-out double by Boone that nearly left the yard. Listen to the crowd. Appreciate it. Oh, no, tough spot here for Riley Ludlam. She's the 14th hitter of the inning. It's 10-1 to Sooners, and she's already made one out in the inning. <laughs> if I was Ludlam, I'd probably lay down a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Riley flied out to third, popped out to third her last time up. Here's the first pitch. That's a little bit out, ball one. Boone's on second. Boone's got four stolen bases this season, but with this ten run explosion, I don't I don't think she'll be on the move here. In fact, we may see Hannah Core come out and play some outfield. The one oh pitch is in first strike. But you know, as soon as I say that, Destiny, I go back to what you said in the pregame. Get out on Love's field, play, get used to yep. it. You might yeah. see the outfielder staying a little bit longer. Yeah, I think I mean either way, they've all got to get used to the field. But I think as we're moving through conference, it's time for the, the starters yeah. to really get a feel for it. It'll one, be interesting one. to see what Coach does. Yeah, 1-1 one, one is low, 2-1. Sooners fell behind one zip in this game. It's now 10-1. to one. And I look down for one second, and Torres hit one out of here. Here's the 2-1 one, uh, one pitch. It's low, ball three. So two home runs from Alina Torres and a grand slam home run from Alyssa Brito. Eight hits on the game for the Sooners. Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch to Ludlam. All four. That's an excited-looking jog down to first base. And we mentioned that we might start seeing some players off the bench. Here is the 15th batter of the inning, and it is Hannah Kaur. Sooners in that first inning on Friday against Texas Tech, which was their biggest inning of the season, when they scored 12 runs, they sent 12 batters to the plate before an out was registered. And in that 12-run, eight-hit first, they sent 15 batters to the plate. This is the 15th batter this inning for the Sooners. First pitch to Hannah Core, A little bit up. Ooh. Called strike. Ten, one Sooners. Runners at first and second. Two outs. The pitch to Core Hangs out. Hannah's up to 200 on the season. Had an RBI sack fly in Saturday's game for Oklahoma. A game in which everyone contributed that came to the plate, either with a hit, an RBI, or a walk. Everybody. And everyone who started scored a run. The 1-1 one, one is a little low, 2-1. and one. In fact, the Sooners went 1-9 through nine on Saturday without registering an out. 
when I say 12 total batters before they registered it out. It was wild. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 to core. Ground ball back up the middle. There's a backhanded play by Castroita. She takes it to the back for the force out, and the inning is over. But the damage is done. Oklahoma absolutely explodes in the second. They send 15 batters to the plate. They pound out seven hits. Three of those seven hits are home runs, including, well, not including Jada Coleman's quote-unquote inside the parker. Visit Century. That's Century with an S. CenturyRoofingOK.com. All right, well, like I said, who knows? Maybe we'll see the veterans stay out there in the outfield. Hannah Kaur is now in center. Maya Bland is in right. <laughs> and that's Cassidy Pickering in left. Alina Torres is playing third now. Avery Hodges is in it short. Quincy Lilio is in second. Ella Parker is getting some time at first. And a battery of Carly Keeney and Riley Ludlam. And the home plate umpire is taking his time to make sure that everybody knows the new hitters for, or excuse me, the new fielders for the Sooners. Wow, 15 batters to the plate, a 10-run inning. Here's Nicole Hill making her first plate appearance of the game. Here's the first pitch, and it's in for a strike. Kent and Melissa were just jumped in. They got. I checked just as Kent and Melissa, and Little Rock, and Courtney and Traverse City checked in. Traverse City, Michigan. Here's the 0-1, a little slap towards short. Hodge waits for the hop, plays it, throws to first. Got it. It's got to be a tough play, right? Kind of that in-between hop. Yeah, so that's she- tough. She, she's playing back behind the base pass, and that's where it gets a little tough. But with a slapper, you would got to time it, but then she's quick. The left-handed hitting leadoff hitter Camille Corona, who singled her last time up. And that, of course, was the very first at bat of the game. Road Warrior is tuned in from Vegas. Vince Paula and Rudy the Dog in East Norman. Jay Kennedy. That's our athletic trainer, Mara's dad, her parents, listening from her childhood home in Frankfort, Kansas. The 1-0 is fouled off. Mara uh, and her husband, Andy, both in the world of kind of athletic training. And to watch her work on Riley Ludlam on Saturday was something because Riley had no choice. She was staying in the game. (laughs) She has to. She had no choice. As the 1-1 pitch to Corona is a bunt right out in front of the plate, and she's going to beat it out. Torres charged late, but Camille Corona is two for two, and that's an infield single. This is a really well-placed bunt. I don't know if it gets much better than that. (laughs) It's a tough play for Torres, too. Some of you have asked for an update on Kenzie Hansen. We'll share what the head coach, Patty Gasso, told us. After the first pitch to the two-hole hitter, Lindsey Franklin, 10-1 to one Sooners, we're in the third. First pitch swinging ground foul. It is a knee issue that they're just being extra careful with for Kinsey Hansen. She won't be able to hit or play today, and I doubt we'll see her this weekend against Baylor. But the hope is that she can be back and ready in the next couple of weeks. Nothing is torn. There is no surgery that is needed. The 1 is looped into left field. It's down for a hit. They're going to hold the runner at second. And this top of the lineup, get them out of town. My goodness. Franklin and Corona now four for four between the two of them. And here is Marley Nice. The three-hole hitter laid down a bunt the last time that Carly Keeney threw past Ella Parker. That led to the only run of the game so far for the Mavericks, but they're threatening here again. But the good news is, back to Kinsey Hansen, if you have Riley Ludlam, they're working a little bit with Alina Torres as a third emergency catcher, and it doesn't appear to be, and Coach said it's not season-ending. So that's a positive. First pitch swinging, grounded to third. Torres drops it, throws to second to get the force out there. I think Alina could have won a race to the bag if she wanted to, but they cut down Franklin at second. Nice as reaches on the fielder's choice, and that'll bring Jessica Adams to the plate. Adams lined into a double play her last time up. 
And it's kind of weird, isn't it? Last year we had so much catching depth, Destiny. <laughs> and this year you just, you really did. Yeah. You had to go to the portal to find Ludlam as late as they did. Yeah, and I think she's done a really good job. But, again, this is a tough decision that she made coming in as a senior, knowing that Kenzie Hansen is in this in her spot, basically. And that's a tough decision for her to really make and come in and the way she's come in has been wonderful i've really liked to see what she's capable of and just the player that she is her character but i'm shocked that it's two seniors now yeah (laughs) exactly all right here's jessica adams first pitch is low two outs runners at first and third sooners up 10 to 1 and and i think it will be worth watching is we were talking about the great job that mara did in, in taping that finger up for Ludlam, we, we really haven't seen her tested. Like, if someone runs on her, is mm-hmm. it going to be she does not have canine's arm? So, what will that grip on the ball look like, too? Yeah. Here's the 1 0 pitch. That's in for a strike. But the pitchers love her. Team loves her. She's grinding away. Riley Ludlam. It's like she'll be behind the plate. For when I say the foreseeable future, I mean over the next three to six games. Don't get too mad at me. One one is in for a strike. She and there's another point. Coach Gassa said she's good with her hands. Yeah. She drew that one she's back in. Framing w- really well. Coach Gassa said she's a great blocker. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Grounded softly back to the circle. Keeney up with it. Throws to first, inning over. Shouts out to our buddy Bruce Burnett and the OU Birmingham Club. Santa Kelly and Anita Ford. They've got us tuned in. For UTA as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Oklahoma on top, 10-1. to one. It's a lefty, and it'll go It'll go with the freshman, Abby Harris. Ella Parker will lead things off. First pitch is a little bit up, ball one. Gutierrez. Deep breath from the back of the circle as she walks and stalks the rubber. Lefty, lefty matchup. In for a strike. One ball, one strike. Ten runs on eight hits for the Sooners and an error. One run on four hits, and they have now added, or or have they? Let's double check. Yep. Nope, still two errors. Line drive. Left center field. It's down. Cut off by the center fielder, Nysis, before I can get to the gap. And it's a two-hit day from Ella Parker. Two hits, two stolen bases. How about this freshman? She is on fire. She's able to go gap to gap. She's able to hit one out. She's quick. She leads the team in stolen bases. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> and you wouldn't expect her to be a, a base stealer. Our buddy Jerry Isbell has checked in. Doug Hamilton down in Hockley, Texas. Marissa was on the road. Her and Eric Holquin listening on vacation. As Q Lilio steps in and takes strike one. I would love to try to tell my wife when we're on vacation that we're going to listen to a sporting event. <laughs> how do you some, think that'd go? Over? I would not. I hope some of you guys realize how good you've got it. No balls and a strike to Q. That's a little bit up. Q's overall season average is only 200, but she's driven in five runs and she scored eight, a double and a home run. She stole three, uh, three bases. Gets the lowdown on Gutierrez after this 1-1 pitch that's fouled off. Abby Gutierrez, 6.03 ERA. 3-1 and one record, 33 in a third innings. But this, 12 strikeouts, 12 walks. Eight home runs, 18 extra base hits allowed for Abby. 1-2 pitch, way up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Pitch to Q. Line drive, left center field. It's down. It'll get up the alley to the warning track. They'll hold Parker up at third. It's a double for Q Lilia. (laughs) 
How about this start to the third? Freshman lines one. Left-handed hitting freshman. Yes. Line one to left center field. The left-handed hitting redshirt sophomore. Lines one to left center yes. field. That, this is what I love when the non-starters of the game get their opportunities. They come in and they take advantage of good pitches. Mm-hmm. They're smart in the box. They move runners. First pitch swinging. Pickering lifts one to center field. It's caught by Nice as Parker will tag and she'll score the 11th run of the game on an RBI sack fly from Cassidy Pickering. It's 11 to 1 Sooners. Chalk up for Cassidy on the season, her 22nd run batted in. And in Brito's spot, here's Avery Hodge. First pitch is in for a strike. As our buddy OU Architect, he's listening in from right field. Bobby's parked for the night in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. What a name for a town. <laughs> There's no way that's real, Bobby. <laughs> Here's the one ball, no strike pitch to Hodge. That's a little bit out. Joel's in Rogersville, Lynn and Kathleen and Norman. Redheaded Sooner, Granny, Karen, and Dwayne have us tuned in. Our buddy C. Mills. Jim, M, Ron, and Annette. St. Thomas, Hogany Run. Up high for ball three. Randy Davis is in Dixon, California tonight. Mike is in Missouri. It's Larry and St. Pete Sooner. And in the Kitches, Abbas in gorgeous Moore, Oklahoma. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Ball four, not even close. Our buddy Brandon Jacks is tuned in. Joe's in Florida. Kelly says, hey. Larry and Danita Higgs are in Prague, Oklahoma. Michael checking in from the Lake of the Ozarks. Alice Adriana are in Chickasha. About to chow down footlong conies. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just brag, why don't you? <laughs> Sid Sanders is 0 for 1 tonight. Walked and scored a runner last time up and takes a strike here. The Lees are in Cedar Park. Crystal, Fairmont, and Moore. Mama T's in Manford. Stacy's in Arlington. Jonathan's in Waco. Troy and Cheryl have us tuned in Norman and Sooner Yaya, Northwest Oklahoma City. 0-1 is popped a mile high into center field. Nicest ranging over more towards right center field makes the catch, and there are two away for the Sooners. Looks like the wind got a hold of that one. You know, that's happened a few times here. Just all of a sudden, you look up and, like, whoa. When they're able to practice out here, I can guarantee you JT will wear the outfield out. <laughs> He will just get his fungo and just hit some skyscrapers. Here's Alina Torres. All she's done is hit two home runs, and she takes the first pitch for a strike. Hey, shout-out to Tina, who's in Statesboro, Georgia. Tara's in the stadium tonight. John and Robin and Ada. Aberdeen, South Dakota for Cowboys Sooner. All you loves and Stigler. There's no one pitch low. Big Sky Sooner and T.J. Carter synced up. Their backyard deck in Noble. Kelly and Kim Walker in Florida. And hello to Randolph from Randolph, New York. That's Jim Roberts where he's tuned in. Is that ball is hammered foul. <laughs> you think she's seeing the ball pretty well right now, Lena Torres? Oh, my goodness. It's dangerous. You can't miss. You got to keep this ball down. Thanks for listening in and tuning in wherever you are tonight. We appreciate it. Sooners are rolling 11-1, bottom of the third. Here's the pitch. Ooh, another nice cut. Fouled straight back. Our buddy Mark Montgomery always finds a way from Santa Fe, New Mexico, to have us tuned in. Val and Jay here in Norman. There we go. One ball, two strikes to Torres. Up high ball, two. 
John R. gets the last one, listening poolside in Arizona, watching the Cubs, and listening to you guys. That's a pretty good combination. That's nice. You live in the life. Jealous. One trade this seat, though. The 2-2 is popped into center field. Not deep enough. Taking a few steps back is the center fielder Nices, and that'll do it for the Sooners in the third. OU pushes across the run. On the sack fly, RBI from Cassidy Pickering. And as we go to the fourth. First time we've seen S.J. Guerin in a minute. As Oklahoma goes to the pin, this pitching change is brought to you by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops is the heart of the highway. Oklahoma 11, UTA 1. Jade Marino's spot. It'll be Caitlin Saylor, the pinch hitter, swings to the first pitch and drives score deep to center field. Hannah leaps. Oh, she brings it back in but doesn't catch it. And it'll be a leadoff double for Saylor, who hit it to the deepest part of the field on the first pitch. Core went up and nearly caught it, but at the very least kept it in play. This is the first appearance for the righty, or the lefty, excuse me, since March 10th in two-thirds of an inning against Iowa State. She gave up a hit, walked one, struck out one, and on March 1st, an inning against Miami of Ohio with a walk and a strikeout. And she spins that nasty, nasty off-speed in for strike one. So again, it's a very, very small sample size, six and two-thirds. She's 2-0. and oh. There's a pop-up on the infield. Q. Lilio is under it. Easy work. One away. That is just the second hit in now seven innings that Garen has given up. How about that play by Corrin center field? Yeah, I... I... You know, she had to cover a lot of ground. She had to get to that wall. But she those are the it. things that you've got to figure out with time. You've got to get your time out on this field and understand where the warning track is. You could tell she was trying to figure out where she was. First pitch strike to say a Castorita. Go ahead and finish that. Yeah, so she's got – no, you're good. She's got to figure out where she's at, where the warning track is, how many steps to the wall. You can kind of tell she was feeling for it. She jumped a little too soon. But those are things that will – be figured out once they're able to practice out here. Oh, one pitch misses a little low. One ball, one strike. Zaya Castroita flying out to left her last time up. She bats here with a runner at second, 11 to 1 Sooners. Strike two. I got a note from our buddy Toby Baldwin, the sport administrator for softball. Just over 500 tickets remaining for Friday night at Hall of Fame Stadium. So go to Soonersports.com slash tickets. We'll sell it out. Let's go. Okay, opening the upper deck, too? Yep. Man. One, two. Swing and a miss. S.J. Guerin gets the strikeout, the seventh of her career, and the first strikeout by a Sooner pitcher tonight. Strikeouts is always brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union, Oklahoma's largest credit union. Two away for Kaylee Cavazos. She grounded out to third her last time up. There's a bunt, pushed foul. <laughs> Got a text from Gayla Boone who said, I made it. Gayla, you missed some fun. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> no balls in a strike. It's 11-1 to Sooners. Here's the 0-1 pitch from SJ, and this has popped up over the grandstand. Actually, I say over the grandstand. It bounced off the front overhang and came back <laughs> we're learning this can we we're gonna sell this baby out Friday yeah night. let's go 500 tickets that's it yeah. soonersports.com slash tickets all the fame stadium you've got time place that destiny knows a lot about oh two good job by ludlam on a pitch that was out and in the dirt oklahoma athletics would like to thank the official eat play state partners visit norman cut bop courtyard by marriott midway De- deli nashford and Norman NCED. Visit Soonersports.com for more information. Two away. The pitch. Soft roller towards short. Avery Hodge up with it. Throws a rifle to first. And that'll do it after the leadoff double. 
S.J. Guerin sets him down in order. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Sooners. Today's game is presented by our OU Community Cornerstone Partners, Fowler Auto Group, OG&E, OU Health, and Coca-Cola. The University of Oklahoma Athletics is one with you. Maya Bland, freshman out of Argyle, Texas. Number 11 player in the class of 2023, according to Extra Inning Softball. We'll lead things off for the Sooners. She had a good weekend at Texas Tech. Takes the first pitch for strike one. She's got three hits on the season. Two of them came this weekend. The three games, she went two for two, scored three runs, drove in two runs. Four total RBI on the season. No ball, one strike pitch to the left-handed hitting Bland is up high, one and one. Got to love her potential, don't you? Yeah, I liked what I saw out of her in the uh, the fall series. Battle series. It's tough to crack this lineup. She's been the regular pinch runner for the Sooners as she takes ball too high. Second on the team in stolen bases now. Two behind. Well, actually, three now behind Ella Parker. She's seven for eight on stolen base attempts. 2-1. Ripped into right center field. It's down for a hit. I mean, she just reached out and <laughs> smoked that one into right center field. Yeah, I think there's reason to get excited. Yeah, I love that for her. She's trying to crack the lineup. It's a tough lineup to crack. But she's she's done a really good job with all of her opportunities. How about that eight spot tonight in the lineup? Two hits from Riley Boone who went two for two with a double and a run scored, and now a single by Bland. And the first pitch swinging, Ludlam pops it up on the infield, caught by the second baseman, Castruita, for the first out. Jada Coleman. Again, Friday night will be in Oklahoma City. Soonersports.com slash tickets. Tickets are available. We'll see you there. Here's Hannah Kaur. Pinch hit for Jada Coleman and grounded out on a force play to second to end a 10-run second. First pitch is in for a strike. Listen to coverage of the NCAA championships on the Varsity Network app powered by Learfield. Fans can hear Westwood One's exclusive coverage along with most schools broadcast through a multicast option. That's only on the Varsity Network app. The 0-1 is hammered. Deep to right center field. It's off the top of the wall. Rounding second and headed for third is planned. She'll stay at third. It's a double that nearly left the yard off the bat of four. How'd that not get out of here is what I want to know. <laughs> it got up in that jet stream. That's usually where balls leave the yard. That's a really good piece of hitting. I love that out of Hannah Core. Here's Ella Parker. The left-handed hitting DP. Now she's out at first base. She's two for three. A couple of singles, a couple of runs scored, two stolen bases. And she takes the first pitch way outside. Log on to Soonersports.com slash kids for information about joining the Sooner Junior Kids Club, presented in part by Orthodontics exclusively, Mathis Home, Devon Energy, and as always, presented by og 1-0 nearly got her. We had that 10-run inning, and I fell behind on all of our great sponsors. Sorry. <laughs> we got excited there in the second. So the Sooners had a 12-run first on Saturday as the 2-0 pitch is grounded back up the middle. Easy play at second by Castruita who throws to first, but it's an RBI ground out as Bland scores from third. And Oklahoma now has a 12-1 lead. And outside of the first, they've now scored in every inning since. Parker's got some wheels. That was a lot closer than it. Yeah. Than I thought it was going to be. I was about to say, that ended up being a lot tighter at first base than it probably should have been. Here's Q. She doubled her last time up. First pitch is in for a strike. Q 
Hugh digs in, deep in the box. The pitch, pop foul and out of play. Scoreboard hasn't quite caught up yet. Sooner scored 10 in the second, a single run in the third, and now a single run in the fourth. It's 12 to 1. No balls and two strikes. The pitch reaches and pokes it foul. Ooh, what do you see in seat-wise there, Destiny? I am looking at all of the seats left at the Hall of Fame. Okay. They're up top. There you go. And those are good seats. The The view is great. And it's down the third base line, right? Is that where you're both looking? Both sides, okay. yeah. Oh, both sides. Only 500 left. How about that? Upper deck. 0-2 is bounced to the right side. Foul. Took a couple of hops. There, was caught up. Midfirst Bank is a premier partner of OU Athletics and your exclusive home for the OU debit and credit card. Visit midfirst.com slash Sooners for details. And Sooner Softball is brought to you by OG&E. OG&E, we energize life. The 0-2 is pop foul again and out of play. Looks like the stat cast has been frozen for me for a bit too, so send your complaints to Thomas. It's all in honesty. <laughs> I don't think you can see me from here. No balls in two strikes with a runner at third and two outs. The pitch is low. One and two. That runner at third is Hannah Clore. Cassidy Pickering waits on deck. I saw, I saw our buddy Mark Worley had tuned in. Brett is up in New York. Tim and his family in Lexington. Jennifer is in Vegas. Swing and a miss on the one-two. Nice breaking ball from Gutierrez that gets Lilio. A little curveball that'll end things for the Sooners, but they add another run in the fourth. We head to the fifth. Uh, Peyton Monticelli's going to come in to close this out for the Sooners. Oklahoma leads it 12-1. to one. The Trails Golf Club offers the perfect atmosphere for great golf and family fun. And at the Trails, you'll find golf at its best in social events to enjoy all year long. Visit Trails Golf. Com. And the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas are on the job 24-7, producing the energy to fuel the modern life. Check out the work they're doing right now and all their stories at oerb.com slash micro. It'll be the 9-1-2 and two hitters as Nicole Hill will lead things off. First pitch from Monticelli is in for a strike. Peyton Monticelli has been impressive all, all season long when given the opportunity. Overall numbers for Monticelli look like this as oof, the 0 1 nearly hit. Monticelli, two, a third appear in the Big 12. She's only made two appearances on the season. This is her 11th appearance, 0.55 ERA. And the foul ball hits the netting behind home plate, a ball with two strikes. Throws hard, Destiny. Oh, my goodness. I think after a year with Rocha, she's going to be dangerous. Look out. Yeah. <laughs> with her velocity and Coach Rocha's everything, mind <laughs> everything, I mean, she's going to be dangerous. One, two is pop fouling out of play. And I, I've talked about this with Peyton before, but she is one team to be a uh, she's one to be a journalist she's one to be a, she's one to get into broadcasting so oh, that is awesome she's got a good personality for it the one two boy that didn't miss by much I think I've noticed an adjustment I think she's it almost looks like she's looking down much more before she pitches than she ever has before. That's popped into foul territory down the third baseline foul. Like, in other words, I, okay, this is where being a radio guy has really got to step up because <laughs> I can't just say, did you see that? But You got this. It, I, I, and, and maybe I just haven't noticed it, but Destiny, she is not looking at her target before she starts her motion. Yeah, she's definitely got her head down until she really gets – Kind of halfway through the motion. I'll tell you what, she's throwing strikes as that's fouled back. 
She has a very smooth and fluid motion. I'm really excited, as you said, about her future and what she could potentially do. Mm-hmm. But I mean, ev- ev- and I mean everything is a work in progress with Monticelli. The 2-2. Little soft slap towards short. Hodge has got to be quick. She is, and she got it. One away. The look that you're discussing kind of reminds me of a little bit of Monica Abbott in, a, in her approach. She kind of keeps that head down, long stride. Here's Camille Corona. Yeah, it's like there is all kinds of time being taken. And I don't think she's missed the zone since. Now watch. I'm going to go ask Jen Roach after the game about the adjustment, and she's going to say it's nothing different. It's what she's been doing all year long. I can almost guarantee it. Her dad's probably yelling at me right now, too. Here's the 0-1, a little bit low. Hey, sometimes you see things that kind of catch your eye that might be a little bit different. This is one of those. It's fair. You can ask the question. It's all right. Here's a one ball, one strike pitch from the Sooner righty. She rocks, fires, grounder to the right side. Q stays down on it, throws to first, two away. <laughs> we'll be heading down to the field for the... Bud Light post game show. Wish me luck. You I don't, don't know need if any luck. I don't know if anything's been closed. I wonder. I wonder if my path is still there. Uh oh. <laughs> how do you? Even, I don't even know how to get there. It took me. Here. It took me a week. First pitch to Franklin <laughs> is up high. Ball one. They check with the first base umpire. He says no. A whole week to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I hope every door is unlocked for you. And now I feel like I'm giving everyone tours. I'm like, hey, come on. I'll show you all around like I own the place or something. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss. We'll hear from Coach. And I don't know. It sounds like an Alina Torres kind of a night. What do you think? Yeah. Heck yeah. The 1-1. Is in for a strike. Strike two. Parker's had a heck of a night, too. One ball, two strikes. The pitch for Monticelli. Got her! Swing and ball game. Oklahoma run rules UTA. And they'll head to Oklahoma City for a Friday night showdown with Baylor. And it's second home Big 12 series of the season. The final in the midweek, Oklahoma 12, UTA 1. The Bud Light postgame show is next. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. 